If those wasn't the right two hoses, That's, I'm gonna be upset. We got, if we hook it back up and it's still spraying inside the, in here. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say some dirty words. Oh. Like I said, if those ain't the right two hoses, uh, well, y'all gonna see a meltdown on camera. I might just break the internet. All right, this uh, seed firmer here is a smart firmer, measures uh, different properties of the soil, organic matter, temperature, uh, moisture content, uh, whether you got any uh, trash hair pinning in the furrow or not. And I got uh, a total of three of them here on the planter, but these things, one of the issues I got with precision planting, these things just don't last great. Of course, I mean, they are running in soil the whole time, so really not surprising, but Anyway, when it went out middle plant last year, there was none to be had due to shortages and just about everything. But anyway, I, I got I got a replacement one now, and so we're gonna uh, we're gonna replace it. To see if that solves the problem on this row. You getting everything unbolted? Just do that, and we gotta figure out which plug it's plugged into up here. There she is. And I believe I found the reason for the problem. This wiring harness is cut right there. I don't know if a stick did that or maybe just bore or what. I'm gonna to to pay close attention when I put the new one on, make sure that doesn't happen again. All right, got the new smart firmer on, wired up there. That should be able to work, but we won't be able to tell until we uh, get the tractor in here with the monitor on there and plug uh, harnesses up okay, so now i'm going to start putting uh disc openers back on and uh they go on these uh bolts right here and if you notice we got shims a bunch of shims right there and that's to adjust the spacing in and out and because we're going with new blades that have got well about uh, five eighths of an inch more diameter we're going to, have to adjust the shims to bring them out a little bit farther to keep the right contact point on the front of the disc where they mate up. So it's gonna be a lot of trial and error to figure out exactly what it's, uh, exactly what the what the right gap's gonna be. All right, we're gonna start out with four shims here on the back side of the disc on each side, see what that looks like. All right, we got them initially mounted. We're gonna pay attention to the gap right there. Make sure it's even on both sides to where the discs are centered up. Looks like it could come out a hair more on this side over here. And then we'll look at the contact patch here on the discs themselves. You want about, a, about an inch to an inch and a quarter. However, these have got paint on them and I found out that they like to loosen up a little bit once we get to the field, so I'm probably going to try and get about an inch and a half of contact point on them. That looks like that might be a little too wide, so I think we're going to try and put one more shim on the inside of this disc over here to bring it out, and then that should be about where it needs to be. All right, look at that gap. And then look at that gap, they're about the same. So I think we got them pretty well centered up. Next thing we wanna do is measure the contact area. We've got uh, three and a half millimeter thickness blades here. So for that, you want them to contact about an inch and a half to two inches right here. So we got two uh, thin pieces of cardboard there. And right now we're at about Right now we're about two and a half inches, which is fine with me. Cause like I said, there's paint on them that accounts for a little bit of thickness. So as they rotate, that paint's going to wear off and then we should have the correct gap. Plus I like them 
It's a little bit tighter than the recommended because they seem to loosen up a little bit once you actually start running them in the field. But if you don't have the correct amount of contact right there, you can have, instead of a VC trench, you can have like a W seed trench to where you don't get uh, the seed down there at the proper depth. You don't want a little ridge of soil right in the bottom of the seed trench because you want to be putting the seed exactly where it's supposed to go. So I think this one uh, right here is about as close as we can get it here in the shop. Now, once we plant a few acres, we'll go back and check them, make sure that they haven't loosened up too much. And we still got, you know, at least an inch and a half of uh, contact uh, right there on the disc blades. All right, where this uh, inner scraper is supposed to go, I did not have any luck getting the bolts out whatsoever. I drilled a hole and tried it easy out, tried heating this up, and they were just, I mean, they was they was in there. Going to plan, plan B. Uh, we completely drilled the, the bolt out to, to oversized, and we got helicoils here that we're gonna put in, and right now, what I'm doing is I'm tapping the threads for the helicoil and then well if, if that doesn't work we either run it like it is or we got to replace this whole shank right here which is not cheap and not fun so hopefully this will work all right we got a new threads cut in there now it's time to thread our uh, helicoil in there All right, got the new Healy coils inserted. That ought to hold. All right, well, that's how you go about repairing this without having to replace that whole shank. Hopefully it holds. You got them all, all on there. I got them close enough. <laughs> you think, think they're all? Oh yeah. All right. I, I, I think so. You may, you may come back and tell me they're way off, but all right. well, I believe they're right. Okay, now let's uh, uh, go ahead and put the scra these disc scrapers on the couple that we took them off, and I'll show you how to shim the gauge wheels properly, and we'll just go through and we'll check each uh, set of disc openers as we go down through and and check check. Uh, and put the gauge wheels on. All right. All right, Andy, the way these uh, go on over here, uh, when they're at their full group, you should you should see a, a little bit of gap in between the tire and the bottom of the uh, disc opener, just the hair. But then as you pick up on them, they come in a little bit more. And they should just, I mean, just barely rub the, the the barely rub the disc if you uh if you pick up and spin it and the disc actually rotates it's definitely rubbing too much but we don't want any gaps down there when you pick it up because that's what keeps the dirt out of the seed trench and keeps a, a nice looking seed trench so that one's right there is adjusted perfectly if you get over there on the front side you can uh you can see it yeah and because we had to bring the discs out just a little bit i had to move one shim from the outside to the inside to bring this gauge wheel back out so that's probably what we need to do starting out on all of them initially is take one from the outside and put it on the inside because our discs are spaced out just a little bit more now because we've got new discs so these are going to be spaced out just a little bit more now. All right, Adrian. Well, let's try and get this thing wrapped up today. We're on the home stretch. Uh, Still got a few more gauge wheels to put on. Still got all our press wheels to put on. 
I gotta check my list, see what else we gotta check. I do know we need to get started on the project I've been dreading for a while. That got that hydraulic hose that runs through the tongue. It's a, uh, we got a bad hose somewhere inside that tube there. See, they all run out, uh, run out the other side there. We got real good at uh, pulling hoses and wires, wiring harnesses out of there last summer well thing is they got it goes all the way up the tongue there but it's uh it's a hose that uh lets the planter down not raises up but lets it down it is uh it's blown so gotta trace it and figure out which one it is and then pull it out all right these two right here the two big ones are the ones that raise and lower the planter so luckily we don't have to uh mess with the one that runs all the way through there because we got this block here however i don't know which is the one that lowers it because they all come from this block here but while looking at this we found another problem see that hose right there it's if it's not blown it's very close to being blown and this other one's wore real bad too but those are not part of the list circuit so it's like we got more than one hose we've got to replace Luckily, these just go from a uh, this uh, hydraulic valve block right there up to right here, so it's not long section. But we got to get it out of where it goes through the tongue, and this is real tight in here, a lot tighter than what this other side was that we were messing with last year. All right, I traced them wrong. Uh, these big ones right here are these run to my fan. They're good it's two back in here are the lift cylinder and look at they just run from this junction here look at that junction where andy's taking them loose so we don't have to go all the way up the tongue tongue with them but i'm telling you what they make this stuff a tight tight fit we gotta get these fittings up here down through there right through here but luckily i think that these hoses right here the ones we're that's busted up in here is the ones that's frayed right there so we're going to replace both the raise and lower and hose because uh even though one of them's not busted it's probably uh, not being far from busted all right uh we'll have to go out that way so I'll pull it. all right all right we're getting gonna get to a tough spot Come on, pull, pull. Oh, that came out a little easier than I thought it would. Alright. Alright, watch your hands because it's that busted spot. You're gonna, mm. you're gonna poke your hands. Feel it. Alright, there's one. All right, hose number two. Pull it. Now, I definitely watch your hands on it because this is probably the one that's blown up in the middle. All right, well, I'm going to get hoses and stuff. We got to look into something else. Uh, some of these uh, closing wheels on the on the furrow force, this, they was tight, and then got to checking more of them. Even the ones that was free, you hear that? Got It's got just a little bit of slack in them. A couple of them just sound a little dry, so rather than just replacing a few of them, be on the safe side, we're going to go ahead and replace all of them. Yeah, it's money, but it's way better than having downtime in the field or having one of these go out and get lost in the field because uh, I don't think a tractor tire would like these lying in the field too well. So probably be money and time ahead. We're just going to go ahead and replace all of them. Yeah, they're only a year old because we put these on last 
winter but uh, planting cotton in the cover crop we did have a little bit of crop wrap around the inside here and then I guess the moisture and stuff just kind of seeped into the bearing and you know not good on the bearings so but on the safe side we're going to replace them all I mean it ain't like we got anything else to do <laughs> No, we've got always a, always have free time. <laughs> These are pretty easy to replace though. Yeah. All right, got back with the hoses. Uh, Andy got all uh, the closing wheels pulled off. Got all the bearings. Just a uh, FYI, these bearings right here is going to add about 33 cents per acre on my overhead cost for the year. Just for bearings for the closing wheels. Let's go ahead and get the hard part out of the way. We'll just save the easy job for last. Think you'd be able to pull them both at once, or? No, there ain't, there ain't no way we be able to pull them both at once because you got those fittings that they got to fit through there one at a time. Yeah, it should be the uh, same thing. All right, we got plugs in one end. Let's, let's use that end to pull it through so we don't get dirt up in the hose. See if I can. Pull it. Pull it. Kitchen on this wiring harness here. Pull it back. That's the problem. We went too far. That's what I was yeah, to... going around that wiring harness there. Right there it is. Can you pull on that? <clears throat> All right, easy one's done. Kind of, kind of scares me. God bless. What a. This is the easy one. Can you push it through any? Come on. Yeah, I think I finally got it started. All right. Get the hard one. There just ain't no room for this one to come through. Ain't no room at all. Pull it, pull it back out. Let's measure where, how far it was. All right, it was right there to the hill. Oh heck, we ain't. We still got a long ways to go. All right, don't don't push on it much. Just kind of just try and guide it in there. <clears throat> Sheesh, things. I just wonder if that thing's gotten crossed yeah, over nice. and looped around. Go ahead and pull it all the way out. We might have to run new string through there because I think it's pull pull on some more. Yeah, I don't know if it's gotten wrapped around. I think it's gonna be against that wall. All right, now that might give us a chance to. Mine, mine is. Mm. I don't. I mean, we're right there. It's not kitchen on these. It's just kind of wedged in between all these other hoses. There we go. There we go. All right. All right. Dad, God. <laughs> 
I'm gonna get a three-point hitch planter next time. If those wasn't the right two hoses, I'm gonna be upset. We got if we hook it back up and it's still spraying inside the in here. Yeah, I'm I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say some dirty words. All right, the struggle was real, but we did manage to get it replaced and everything put back in place there. Like I said, if those ain't the right two hoses, uh, we y'all gonna see a meltdown on camera. I might just break the internet. All right, Andy's uh, putting on the last of the parts, the uh, uh, closing wheels for the front units, and uh, I'm gonna go over here and start replacing all these bearings. stretch i think we got everything done on this except for putting our corn meters on we say the easy part for last uh, basically just take all these uh, hoppers off and then i'll show you how to how to put the plates and stuff in and i think she'll be ready to go back up under the shed for a month and a half or so and get started on the next project <music> need to work on on some of these road cleaners the backing plate here is loose Is it hurt anything probably not but i mean it's sitting there and it's wearing down where it's, it's supposed to be you know tight like that so i got one of them done so this is a backing plate and it fits on here just like that and what i'm gonna do is take it over here on the lathe and mill a little bit of this surface down to where when you bolt it back up it's putting pressure on this backing plate too mainly i just wanted a good excuse to be able to use my new lathe <laughs> You see her weight's good and good and tight on there. Good and tight. <laughs> good and tight. I, lo I love the German torque system. All right, Andy, what did we miss on it? Uh, hopefully nothing. <laughs> maybe a maybe a hole in one of these 40 foot hoses, but everything else. Uh, don't be talking about no ho holes and hoses. Uh, we went through with a fine tooth comb. I think we got everything done. So we got it hooked up the tractor. We're going to pull it outside and unfold it, let it down, make sure we got the right hoses replaced and don't have any leaks.
All right, well, that was our solution to the problem. And he took off the trigger wheel, and really, the only thing that's used for is really for flotation for the road cleaner. Still got one on one side, plus we got the stop that we can set to keep it from going too far down. I don't know if uh, whenever we rattle these hoses through here, we just shifted something a little bit. Uh, anyway, uh, we rewrapped this and pulled in a little bit more. It's still rubbing lightly, but now that we took the trigger wheel off, there's, uh, there's no rubbing on that anymore. Now she ready to go back and shed? I believe so. I think she's all all tight. Everything's tight. Lock tighted and sharp. Ro rotate smoothly. So. And we had no oil leaks from our hoses too. So mm -hmm. reckon she's ready to go back and shed for about a month and a half and we'll hook back up to it. All we gotta do is put some bag of seed in there, grease it and go plant some corn. Not quite time to do that yet though. Thank goodness, I still got a few more nights of going home at five o'clock before we gotta start the field work. All right guys, appreciate y'all watching. Uh, we about to get started on the next project, bring you back in a couple days.